Welcome, my brothers and sisters, to the Show Me God online week of revival. I hope you had a good day, and uh, I hope you are getting blessed in these meetings. God bless you so much. Those who are uh, overseas, we know it is daytime there. This side of the globe is now evening. We all meet at the foot of the cross to praise the Lord. We are all aware of the fast fulfilling signs of the times that are happening around us on a daily basis. So we need to constantly remind each other of the soon coming of Christ. I am your brother, Irvin Yatanga, uh, on behalf of the Show Me God Ministries. I extend greetings to you. Uh, our theme that we are looking at during this whole week, I'll say it again in case there are those who are on the platform for the first time. We are exploring the theme why our camp meetings are boring from one year to another. Why the revival is delayed. Why the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is delayed. Is it God's fault or our own fault? These series of meetings will answer these questions and you will be blessed that you enjoy the forthcoming camp meetings. We are going to encourage all those who have not yet subscribed to the Show Me God channel on YouTube. Please do yourself a favor and hit the red button. You will be privileged to receive powerful uploads that we make from time to time. By the way, the Show Me God ministry uh, was established by the Lord for one purpose, to preach and declare the praise and truth of our time, to prepare a people for the second coming of Jesus. Please feel free to partner with us in this sacred calling. We need you to partner with us that you may give the trumpet a certain tone. Now, my topic for this program tonight or this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you are, with a very powerful topic entitled God on the Mount Sinai Pulpit. God on the Mount Sinai came meeting Pulpit. Shall we bow our heads and invoke his presence to guide us? Father, in the kingdom of heaven, we come to you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for leading us on to day number three in the series. We ask you for the Holy Spirit to guide us in understanding what you have in store for us. Especially do I lift up my brothers and sisters who are worshiping with us online in different parts of this world. Those overseas, those in Africa, those in Europe, in the Americas, the Middle East, in China, bless them all, Lord. May each one receive that blessing if he's in store for them. And remember us when Jesus comes. In his worthy name we pray. Amen. God on the Mount Sinai pulpit. Finally, the third day came. God told Moses, tell the children of Israel to prepare for the meeting with the Lord on the third day uh, on Mount Sinai. So we covered those topics. Finally, the third day came and what happened? There are lessons in, the, in today's subject, implications to all preachers, teachers, educators, musicians, and all those who attend camp meetings. God on the pulpit. How have our pulpits been in our camp meetings? What has been going on on those pulpits? Is it brought revival or it has made people worse than they came? Here is a model for camp meetings, for camp meeting preaching, teaching, the camp meeting pulpit. God took it himself on Mount Sinai and laid a foundation for all generations uh, after Sinai to the close of time. I believe we are going to experience a great revival in our camp meetings. Let's pay heed. The book of Exodus 19, verse 16. 
It came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount that is Sinai and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. We talked about the theophany yesterday, the appearance of God. Then God appeared on Mount Sinai. His people had made themselves ready for the event. Then sound, celestial music, trumpets, music, uh, voices from above, angels accompanying the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the Creator, descended on Mount Sinai, and the Lord stood on the pulpit. Says all the people in the camp trembled. I want to assure you, dear friends, you can never have a proper camp meeting in your districts, in your conferences, in your unions, until you draw lessons from the Mount Sinai camp meeting. God descended, took the pulpit himself, and all the people stood in awe at that campsite. There must be awe and reverence in our campsites, for God still attends camp meeting. Jesus still attends camp meeting and his angels even to this day. That's why he has commanded us to meet once a year in holy convocations called camp meetings. All oh, reverence to the Lord. Thank God for Mount Sinai camp meeting. Now what happened? All oh, the campers were humbled. I pray for this spirit in our camp meetings. Sometimes we see carelessness, careless behavior in the camp, irreverence, or oh, what a contrast with what happened in Mount Sinai camp meeting. Exodus 20, verse 1 to 2. God on the pulpit. Verse 1 says, And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, which have brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. This was a powerful introduction by God on the pulpit. The creator of the heavens and the earth spoke to the congregation gathered, camped around Mount Sinai. His voice, thunderous and loud, came rolling down the mountain and reverberated and echoed throughout the valley, throughout the places surrounding the mountain where the children of Israel were camped. Each one heard the voice of God. Friends, fathers heard the voice of God in this community. Husbands heard the voice of God in this community. Mothers heard the voice of God at this camp meeting. The youths heard the voice of God at this camp meeting. Even the little children heard the voice of God at this camp meeting. Point number one. When we go to camp meeting, my brothers and sisters, if we prepare ourselves, humble ourselves, the Lord will manifest himself and we shall all hear his voice loud and clear. There was no celebrity at this camp meeting. People did not go for some popular music group or some popular preacher. There are those who only hear the voice of a man, not the voice of God at these camp meetings. And when they leave home, they leave camp meeting for their homes, they go home talking about the preacher, talking about how he did this or how this group sang. They hear the voices of men. And when we go to camp meeting and properly camp, having prepared ourselves, we hear the voice of God. Our youth will not be disobedient and rebellious at the campsite because they, each one of them will hear the voice of the Creator. There will be no scandals at camp meeting because all will hear that voice. So they were privileged at the Mount Sinai camp meeting. They all heard the voice of God amidst the thunder, the lightnings, the thick clouds, the rumblings and mumblings of Mount Sinai as it trembled before the King of Kings. All nature trembled when God spoke to his people. There was silence, reverence, and awe. 
We need this primitive godliness in our campsites. Let's go and hear the voice of God. And the Lord spoke. He delivered a powerful sermon on that day. Verse 2 says, And the Lord said, I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. I want you to imagine this great campsite around Sinai. The slaves have been freed from Egypt, now free on the foot of Mount Sinai. The first camp meeting in freedom and liberty, and God started there. I am the Lord who brought you out of bondage. The message of redemption. I redeemed you. I saved you from the oppressive hand of Pharaoh. I liberated you. I am your liberator. You are free because of me. You are here because of me. And they all said, Amen, in agreement. I redeemed you. I saved you. Your salvation is in my hands. I, I brought you out. You could not bring yourselves out. So God reminded the campers of the story of redemption, the story of liberation. This was also pointing to Calvary, where all humanity was redeemed by Jesus' blood on Calvary. We are, brothers and sisters, including our preachers, teachers in our camp meetings, ever to echo and re-echo the story of redemption. How God liberated us from our sins, from the hand of Satan, from demons and evil spirits. We owe our existence, our livelihood, our freedom to the redemptive acts of God uh, at Calvary. Israel so remembered as God spoke this powerful sermon. It flashed in their minds how they were servants, in slaves in Egypt, how they were made to make brick out of straw. They remembered their days of servitude as the Lord delivered the message. They remembered how they were being whipped by whips by Pharaoh's soldiers. They remembered how the Lord plagued Pharaoh ten times with powerful plagues in that camp meeting. And their hearts were warmed with love and reverence to their creator. Friend at every camp meeting, the preachers, the teachers, the, the musicians must emphasize the story of our redemption. This is the purpose of camp meeting. When the story of redemption, our liberation, is ignored in our camp meetings, people become careless on the campsite. We must be reverent. We must reflect on how God has brought us through the air to the camp meetings, how he healed us from deadly diseases, from pandemics, saved us from accidents. He redeemed us, he saved us, and brought us to the camp meetings. Our hearts, when we exercise uh, these uh, thoughts in our minds to recall the redemptive hand of God, our hearts will be warmed up in appreciation and will praise God from the heart and the committee. It is meant for us to give uh, gratitude and praise to the Lord. And also we are to bring that thank offering in recognition of his salvific acts. So all Israel remembered how God, how they were pursued by Pharaoh with his army and chariots. And they were cornered in the Red Sea. It is God delivered. I am the Lord out of the thunder, out of the lightnings. Who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of bondage? They remembered Pharaoh pursuing them, cornered by the Red Sea. And there was no way out. Death was certain. And they recalled in their minds how God opened a dust road in the midst of the sea and made a passage of escape for them by his mighty power. And that came sight. The opening statement of God's sermon called them to remember the love of God, the mercy of God, the unmerited love which saved them from the hand of Pharaoh. Now God's unmerited love he saved us from eternal death through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, our Liberator. Jesus Christ who agonized in Gethsemane for us and went up to Calvary's cross 
when we go for camp meetings, our guest speakers must not major on minor subjects. They must not do theatrical performance to impress the congregation with big words, scholastic words. We need the story of redemption. We need to be reminded of Gethsemane, of Calvary's cross, how Jesus paid it all for each one of us. We don't deserve to be at camp meeting. It is by grace that we survived the pandemics, the COVIDs, whatever is happening because of grace. And we owe it to Jesus. So friends, this was the mood around Mount Sinai. As God stood on the pulpit to deliver. The opening statement was too powerful. It sent people thinking back how amazing grace had led them to the foot of Mount Sinai. It is amazing grace, friend, that leads you to the next camp meeting. You may be missing from the next camp, camp meeting, you know. It is only by grace that you go there. Then don't be careless and silly at the campsite to provoke the Lord. We must go there with all Oh, and reverence to this glorious name, the Lord, your God, who brought you out. We were baptized in the name of Jesus, brought out from the world of sin, forgiven of all our past iniquities. We owe it our Redeemer as we assemble in our camp meetings. May we recall these things. Ellen White says in the book, Desire of Ages. It would be so well to take one thoughtful hour every day to meditate upon the story of redemption, to meditate about Jesus, sweating as it were, great drops of blood in prayer and get some money for you and me for our redemption, to contemplate upon his journey to the cross via Dolorosa, carrying the cross for you, how he was nailed and how he said, Father, forgive them. This will melt our hearts and we'll see that we owe it to Jesus. So camp meeting must stress the story of redemption. Why did God begin his sermon on Mount Sinai with this message? What was the next topic he was going to present? I want to say the youth heard this voice, the fathers heard the voice, the mothers and the little children. I want to say to our youth, when you go to camp meeting, friends, don't go there for girls. Go for Jesus. Hear his voice. He will speak to you and you'll be blessed. Then God went on to speak on that pulpit, Mount Sinai, as the vast throne was assembled and the mountain quaked. The smoke billowed up. The lightning cracked, zigzagged around Mount Sinai. The trumpets loud. Angels gathered in the head this powerful message. Number one, the voice said, Exodus 20, verse 3, from the pulpit of Sinai, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. This sermon was delivered on Mount Sinai. There's nothing fanciful about this speech of God. It is straight to the point. Why should you have no other gods before me? Because I brought you out of Egypt. I redeemed you. I saved you. Your salvation is in my hands. The reason that I saved you, I redeemed you out of bondage from Satan's slavery, from the death penalty. Therefore, thou shalt not have other gods before me. So friends, the Mount Sinai sermon by the Lord binds us to God. Why should we obey God's commandments? This reason is because he redeemed you and me. He brought us out from sin and Satan's slavery. We could not liberate ourselves out of his own mercy. Jesus came from heaven, died for you before we chose him. And so by that act of redemption, we are bound to Jesus. Both old and young, fathers and mothers and youths, no other gods so among all the campers at Mount Sinai. The Lord reminded them of his loving, redemptive acts and claimed their worship. God has a right to claim your worship, to claim your time, to claim your service because he redeemed you. So commandment keeping is for the redeemed. 
the unredeemed are free to sin. But those who are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed from the powerful hand of Satan, are bound to Christ by loyalty and obedience to his commandments. Friend, if you don't obey God and keep his commandments, you are saying he is not your redeemer. All the truly redeemed are obedient. We need these messages in our camp meetings. Every youth is bound to God by redemption. Every young lady, every father and mother bound. Other gods, don't have other gods before me. Uh, I used to think that the other gods, graven images and the things like that, uh, gods of stone images that people make for themselves, uh, images of the so-called saints, Virgin Mary and things like that. Yes, God doesn't want us to do that. We were redeemed by his own blood. He redeemed Israel by a mighty hand. And he says, I love you so much so that I don't want to see you degrading yourselves, debasing yourselves to worship lifeless, dumb things created by men's hands. When we bow down to images, you debase yourself below human level. Redeemed people worship the living God, the invisible God, the God who made heaven and earth, the redeemed. Those who, who don't appreciate his redemption who worship anything. Don't uh, have other gods before me. When we worship other gods, we show ingratitude to the redemption that was offered us at Calvary, Gethsemane, and the Israelites, Israel, Israelites would, by having other gods, they would be despising the redemption, the experience from Egypt, from the hand of, of Pharaoh. And so God delivered this message at this camp meeting, and the people saw that the Lord is God and ought to be worshipped. If you read Exodus 20, verse 4 to 6, from the Mount Sinai pulpit, the Lord said, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven or above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, I am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children to the third and to the fourth generation of those that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. This was the sermon delivered on Mount Sinai camp meeting from the pulpit by the Lord when he descended in majesty, accompanied by angels among my people whom I have redeemed by my powerful hand out of Egypt and those whom I have redeemed by the blood of my son, at Calvary. No bowing down to graven images or any likeness of anything is in heaven. The Lord told his people who were camped there, I, your God, I am a jealousy God, very jealousy over you because you are the product of my hands, my redemption, my blood. You are my people. I am jealousy over you. I won't tolerate any rivals as far as worship is concerned. You, 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 you owe me your worship. I saved you. I redeemed you. I thought images were only wood and carved by men. But men worshiping fellow human beings is forbidden. Why? Because God made men in his own image. So on top of carved images, man is another image that was made by God. So we are told not to worship any image, even a human being. God's people have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. In this case, the Israelites redeemed by the hand of God from Pharaoh uh, were not to worship any human being. There are those who go to care meeting for their human gods, the celebrity preachers. They first of all inquire who is preaching in this campsite or that campsite. They will go and leave other campsites and trek and follow their idol preacher men. 
their celebrity, the image, they start to worship a man made in the image of God, not God himself. Thou shalt not worship any image, even if it's a man. He was made in the image of God. Only God is to be worshipped. No man must be worshipped by God's people. Regardless of his talent, no matter how talented, don't worship you. No matter how eloquent in preaching, don't worship you. No matter how rich, don't worship him. No matter how powerful, don't worship him. You must worship the Lord alone. For all men are images made in the image of God. So God forbids image worship. Men worship among those who, whom he has redeemed. Those who has brought, whom he has brought out of the bondage of sin and slavery. Friends, today there is so much human worship even in our camp meetings. Some men whose opinions are held as doctrine in God's church, in the church boards, even at camp meetings. Those who go for celebrity preachers and singers in camp meetings are worshiping images. Worship God. So God reminded his people at that great, great camp site on Mount Sinai and directed all worship to himself. So, we can deduce here, friends, that camp meeting is about God and God alone. And camp meeting is for the redeemed and they know who to worship. Those who have not been redeemed have other gods, even at the campsite. There are some people who say, if so and so is not preaching at this camp meeting, I won't attend that camp meeting. If so and so is not going to the camp meeting, so I will not also go there. Whom are you worshipping? Why do we go and assemble for God and God alone? Let's see if our priority is right. When we go and worship images, that is why our camp meetings are boring. That is why no revival comes. That is why the Holy Spirit baptism has been delayed because our worship is not yet theocentric, God-centered. Our worship must be Christocentric, Christ-centered, not human-centered. The singing groups must sing theocentric songs, God-centric songs, and Christocentric songs. There are those who are there to display their talents. We are going to look at that sometime when we look at a topic called apostasy in the camp. Please stick with Show Me God Ministry throughout this entire week. You are going to hear things you have never heard before. And I give glory to God because he has revealed these things to us in prayer and study with the Lord. So all Israel knew that in Israel there is the doctrine, doctrine of monotheism. One God and one God only. Monotheism. Worship is due to God and God alone. Friends, if you miss Mount Sinai camp meeting, doctrine and teaching, you're not going to make it in the time of the mark of the beast where human worship will be enforced. Those who have been to Sinai will not receive the mark of the beast. They know who to worship. Thank God for Mount Sinai. The voice of God declared on that pulpit as all were listening, both old and young and the youth. I want to say to the youth, don't worship your girlfriend. She is not God. Don't worship your boyfriend. He's not God. Go to camp meeting for God and God alone, and you'll be blessed. The voice said, Exodus 20, verse 7, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guilty less. That taketh his name in vain. The name of God is redemption to you, O Israel. Remember how he redeemed you, how he brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the cruel hand of bondage. Don't take the name of the Lord in vain. It is, that name is redemption to you. That name is salvation to you. The name of Jesus is salvation to us. He redeemed us by his own blood. Hold that name in reverence. In all, behave yourself well before the Lord, even at camp meetings. Young people, behave yourselves. Don't go there as people who know not God. You get a curse on holy grounds. Prepare to meet the Lord on the third day, for he will descend, Moses told the children. 
Hold that name in awe and reverence. That name redeemed you. That name opened the Red Sea. That name buried Pharaoh, your oppressor. That name conquered Satan and sentenced him to death. That name, in the name of Jesus, we are liberated. That name will take us to the kingdom of heaven. Don't take it in vain. In your thinking, in your associations, in your interactions, in your worship, in your singing, in your preaching, don't take the name of the Lord in vain. Oh, Israel heard and said, Amen. Amidst the thunder, the lightnings on Mount Sinai, our pulpits in our camp meetings must lift up the name of Jesus. Don't take the name of the Lord in vain. Pastors, preachers, by joking on the pulpit, by making the congregation laugh from start to finish, by showing scholastic ability on the pulpit, don't take the name of the Lord in vain. That name is salvation to all the campers. Hold it in awe and reverence. You see, the Lord says, if you have any images that you worship and you bow down to them, I'm jealousy. I will punish you to the third and to the fourth generation. You see, God says, if you have other images that you worship and you take the name of the Lord in vain, the name that redeemed you and saved you. He will punish you to the third and to the fourth generation of your descendants because you have not held that name in reverence. You have forgotten the story of redemption. You have forgotten why you are here. Remember where the Lord took you from when you are camping. Some were drunkards, some were adulterers, some were thieves, some were murderers, and Jesus saved you and you got baptized. Now when you are in his church at campsite, remember where you came from, humble yourself and hold that name uh, in awe. The Lord is not going to hold him guiltless. He who plays with his name and despises the redemption connected to that name. I want to thank God, God on the pulpit on Mount Sinai, a foundation for all camp meetings after Sinai. And all preachers and teachers must follow this model message given by God. Remind God's people of the commandments of God. For these commandments bind us to God. We are his people. We ought to obey him out of love, conscious of his redemption, conscious of his salvation that is offered us just as the Israelites we remain minded of that salvation. The voice of the Lord on the pulpit, Mount Sinai. Oh, that the voice of Mount Sinai may be heard in our camp meetings as well. Our youth would be sober. They would behave well at the campsite. Our children would be sober. And all campers would be sober. And they would receive the blessing of the Lord. The voice said, Exodus 20 verse 8, amidst the thunder, the smoke, the lightning, Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Six days thou shalt labor, do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God in it. Thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, thy daughter, main servant, or maid servant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. So on that Mount Sinai message, when the great theophany appeared and they experienced it, they heard the very voice of God, not the voice of a human preacher. That voice declared that, that came meeting and stressed the importance of keeping the seventh day Sabbath. Why? Because I redeemed you. I brought you out of Egypt. God's argument on Mount Sinai is, I redeemed you, so obey me. I purchased you. I brought you out from death and saved you through the Red Sea. Obey me and keep my commandment and remember the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath. So the Sabbath is for the liberated. The Sabbath is for the redeemed. The Sabbath is for those who have experienced the salvation of God. Those who have received Jesus as their personal Savior, who redeemed them by his own blood, they keep the Sabbath of God. Thank God. There are two arguments that I find 
in the Sermon on Mount Sinai from God himself. Two claims for human obedience in submission to his authority. Number one, you obey me because I redeemed you. Number two, keep my commandments, my Sabbath, because I created you. I made heaven and earth and everything that is in them. I'm the creator and the redeemer. Two points. On these two arguments, you are mine. Obey me. So the Sabbath, God declared, has to be remembered by all his redeemed people. Friends were told in every camp meeting, in every camp meeting, even after Sinai, the words of God must be repeated by preachers and teachers and musicians in song. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. The story of redemption, lest we forget Gethsemane, lest we forget Calvary, lest we forget the agony of Jesus for all of us. There are many fanciful preachers who are preaching fanciful messages that have nothing to do with Calvary, the story of our redemption, nothing to do with the Sabbath, but some skillful eloquence that are empty nothings that impress for a moment, and after they came, people soon forget, and they only remember the rhetorical skills, the hypnotic statements made by the public orators. God is the model of all preachers. Remember, I created you. Keep my commandments. Remember, I made you. I redeemed you. I am your maker. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, the earth and the fullness thereof are the Lord's. And the people therein. So God claims ownership of the whole earth and its peoples, including the redeemed. And the, the, the Lord declared this message. He never said the Sabbath is of the Jews. It is his Sabbath. He blessed it. So our camp meetings should bring us revival and a, a stronger desire to obey our Redeemer and our Creator. Sabbath keeping. So among the Israelites camp by the mountain, there was to be found no Sabbath breaker. In our camp meetings too, there are men who violate the Sabbath and dare to go up front and address the congregation. That is why revival is not coming. That is why the spirit is not among us, because there is no more primitive godliness. God help us to go back uh, to primitive godliness and worship God and keep his commandments. Now, I'm about to finish this message. I'm going to preach the part two tomorrow. Go to Mount Sinai, part two. The sermon that was delivered from the pulpit at the camp meeting, a model for all camp meetings. Now, God said to the people after speaking these messages, you see, we are to remember the Sabbath in every camp meeting and to stress the importance of obedience to our God out of love, conscious of his redemption. Because very soon in the next few months, the Sabbath issue is coming to the forefront. The great controversy is climaxing. There's going to be an issue of Sabbath Sunday question, mark of the beast, persecution of God's people. Those who have camped at Mount Sinai with God and throughout the camps reminded of the Sabbath will not yield to a false man-made Sabbath that will be legislated in the whole world. Thank God for camp meeting. It reminds us of the Sabbath and uh, helps us to prepare to stand in the time just before us. So if you're in the habit of breaking the Sabbath, friend, you're not going to make it in the time of trouble. Now is the time for you to repent and uh, to observe the Sabbath and obey God's message on Mount Sinai. God said in that voice from that pulpit, Exodus 9, verse 5, 19, verse 5 to 6, Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant or my commandments, then he shall be a peculiar treasure to me above all the people of the earth, for all the earth is mine. God on the pulpit on Mount Sinai said to the congregation, if you obey these commandments that I've been speaking to you today on this pulpit, with angelic witnesses amidst the fire and the thunder, if you obey these commandments, including the Sabbath, I will make you my treasure upon the earth, a peculiar people to me above all the other people on this earth. What a blessing. This is the blessing we need in our camp meetings. 
when we obey the Lord, he makes us his treasure above all the people of the earth. Sabbath keeping, obedience to the Lord, no other God, no take the name of the Lord in vain, cherishing the, the story of redemption in the story of creation makes us unique above this world. And the Lord says, you become the apple of my eye, my treasure. He who touches you, touches the apple of my eye. The Lord will avenge himself when his people who obey him are wronged. So I want to thank God. You can be his treasure. I can be his treasure if we obey him. And the Lord went on to say, verse 6, And he shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which shall speak unto the children of Israel. So he stressed again these words to Moses. Friends, we are bound to God by creation and by redemption. And if we love God in response, we obey his commandments. Jesus said, if you love me for redeeming you on Calvary, keep my commandments. Obedience is not legalistic. It's a result of appreciation of the story of creation, story of redemption. Friends, this is powerful. I want to thank God. The Great Controversy, page 478 says, It is only as the law of God is restored to its rightful position that there can be a revival of primitive faith and godliness among his professed people. Only when the law of God is restored to the pulpit and people obey the claims of God based on redemption and creation, then we can experience primitive godliness, primitive faith, and God will shower the blessings, double portion of the Holy Spirit in the form of the latter rain. Today, many pulpits are quiet about the law of God and the claims of God upon his people. There are many fanciful sermons, theatrical performance, scholastic presentations that don't sanctify. Now is the time to reform. Jesus is coming again. I want to read um, a quotation here or two. Something is wrong with our pulpits in our camp meetings. Judging by the pulpit at Mount Sinai, being the standard for all pulpits, there is something wrong with our pulpits. We need to reform. We need to reform now before the next camp meeting. What does the Spirit of Prophecy say? Gospel Workers, many meetings. Okay, Gospel Workers, page 402. Many meetings are conducted in which the larger number of the people have no interest. And if they could attend them all, they would go away wearied instead of being refreshed and benefited. Many campers are disappointed at the failure of, of their expectations to receive help from the camp meeting. Those who come for enlightenment and strength return to their homes little better fitted to work in their families and in churches than before attending camp meeting. Why? People are disappointed. Camp meeting has been boring. The pulpit, strange messages, the teachings in the classes, they are not lifting up the principles that God lifted up on Mount Sinai pulpit. So many are disappointed. And he says now, our camp meetings, uh, our camp meetings are not held for the purpose of putting men on exhibition of showing, of showing off their capabilities and talents. That's not the purpose of, of the camp meeting. The people come together to receive spiritual good. There are among them those who are thirsting for the water of life. Give them the opportunity to drink until they are quenched. Let them hear the message fraught with the love of God. Let them, let them have opportunity of listening uh, to men of ripe talent, men whom God has been educating and training in delivering Mount Sinai message and principles to the campers. So wash your clothes, prepare, the Lord is coming, the commandments of God, the story of redemption, the story of creation. Our people should be fed with these messages. Ellen White says here again, I read, uh, in 1890, I was given the following message to bear to our people. A mistake has been made in putting young men forward to speak at our camp meetings. Before large congregations, when they had not the vital truths to present that were appropriate for the occasion, precious time has been occupied by those who did not themselves know the true message for this time. 
pioneers in the cause, men who had the bread of life to give to the people, men whose hearts and minds were filled with the vital truths needed by the hundreds and thousands of people assembled, have sat and listened to young preachers who could not do justice to the occasion. Not even half work is, was done in the presentation of the gospel. Ellen White says young ministers who are not yet experienced in the things of God who only have academic knowledge and they have not ex experience with God, are not to be given came meetings to present before large audiences that are thirsting for truth while pioneers in the faith, men of experience, are seated there. One of the things that we need to look into carefully is a spiritual selection of uh, appropriate teachers and preachers in our camp meetings, men with sound minds who have spent much on the mountaintop with God, who remember the Sinai deliverance and carry it on and present it to the people. At our camp meetings, present truth is to be presented in clear lines. The third angel's message is to find its place in the world. Daniel is to stand in his lot and place, bearing his message that the time of the end is near. Fear God. Keep his commandments. For the hour of his judgment is come. It is to be echoed and re-echoed in our camp meetings. God bless you, friend, for sticking with Show Me God to uh, uh, listen to this message. May your camp meeting life never be the same again. Go for God, not for celebrities. Humble yourselves. Remember the story of redemption, the story of creation, the sermon on Mount Sinai pulpit by the Lord, and humble yourself and claim the blessing. You will receive it this year in the committee. Somebody saying tonight, Lord, thank you for this message. I receive it with all my heart. I want to renew my commitment to the Lord. Make me an obedient child to obey your commandments, to remember the story of redemption and to keep the Sabbath. If it is the desire of your heart, you shall bow with me as we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for speaking to us in a powerful way. Thank you, Lord, for Mount Sinai camp meeting. Thank you for taking on the pulpit uh, at Mount Sinai and for laying a foundation for all time's sake. Lord, thank you for the story of our redemption, for Jesus who shed his blood for all of us. And thank you for the creation story that reminds us that we owe our existence to you. I commit my brothers and sisters who are saying, Lord, here I am. Sanctify me, prepare me for your soon coming, make me an obedient child, and baptize me with your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters. Be blessed. Let's meet again tomorrow, same time, as we consider God on the Mount Sinai pulpit, part two. God bless you. Tell a friend to be here with you tomorrow. Take care.